السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا الصلاة حيا الصلاة إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح لهذه الأمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فاللهم صل وسلم وبارك على هذا النبي الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعلى من اهتدى بهديه وسار على دربه إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أعاذني الله وإياكم منها آمين معاشر المسلمين الكرام My dear respected brothers and sisters we start our khutbah today <coughs> As usual, by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending our salam, our prayers upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his family, his companions, and all his followers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all among the sincere and the truthful followers of Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. Ameen, ameen. My dear brothers and sisters, one of the universal rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his creation, sunnatun min sunanillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala fil khalq, sunnatu al-ibtila wal-imtihan wal-ikhtibar, the sunnah 
the universal rule of tests and trials. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran in many places, one of them the beginning of Surah Al Mulk. Blessed is the one who in whose hands rest all authority and he is most capable of everything. He is the one who created death and life in order to test which of you is best in deeds. And he is the almighty, all forgiving. But sometimes, my dear brothers and sisters, the test is so tough, is so tough, to the point that believers start questioning their faith, to the point that believers start questioning where is Allah? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is allowing these crimes and these atrocities to take place? Wallahi, we had people calling the office, crying. We know that this kind of stuff happen. Here is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us in the Quran. In Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 214. أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أَن تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مَسَّتْهُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالضَّرَّاءُ وَزُلْزِلُوا حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do you think you will be admitted into Al Jannah, into paradise, without being tested like those before you? They were afflicted with suffering and adversity, and they were so violently shaken that even the messenger, not only the believers, the messenger himself, and the believers with him cried out, When will Allah's help come? Indeed, Allah's help is always near. Is always near. Allah's help is conditioned with something very specific. This is the equation. If you show support to Allah, how do we show? Does He need our support? Our support to Allah, my dear brothers and sisters, when we go back to Him, when we turn to Allah Azza wa Jal, when we honor this commitment we have with Him Subhanahu wa Taala, then yansurkum. Then at that point, expect the victory of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Supporting Allah Subhanahu wa Taala when we stand for the values and the principles of justice and fairness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us in the Quran and the Prophet sallallahu taught us in the Sunnah. Another verse from Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 156. Here is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. He will certainly test you with a touch, with a touch, shay, with a touch of fear and famine, starvation, and loss of property, life, and crops. But give good news to those who patiently endure, who say when struck by a disaster, by a calamity, surely to Allah we belong and to Him we will return. They are the ones who will receive Allah's blessings and mercy. And it is they who are rightly guided. My brothers and sisters, our ummah is not an exception. Like nations before us, 
Throughout our history, we have gone through many times of joy and celebration or celebrating victories, but also times of test trials, major and minor, big and small. We know and, and we understand the reason behind every calamity. That's why we should act and respond the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to act and respond and the way our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed us. We know the reason. We have to go back to the Quran and study the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Go back to the lives of the prophets and we will understand what's the divine wisdom and, and, and reason behind these calamities, behind these tragedies that happened to the ummah of the believers. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us and the Prophet sallallahu taught us how to respond to these calamities. My dear brothers and sisters, what's happening right now? I don't want to turn this khutbah into a uh, news report, but I would like to just to remind you about few facts that are taking place at this moment. Number one, a brutal attack and continuous genocide on Palestinians in Gaza. This is how we call it. Number two, an ethnic cleansing taking place right now, similar to the one took place in 1948. But this time we have to pay attention to one thing. They are trying to empty the land of Gaza by pushing the people of Gaza out of Gaza and creating another refugee camp, either in Sinai or in the desert of Negev. Their plan is to empty Gaza. They don't want anyone to stay over there. And they know why they want to do. And this is not just recently, by the way. This is the plan that they started a few decades ago. Number three, what's happening? Mass killing of civilians. Until now, over 4,000 people killed. Half of them are kids. Number four, bombing residential areas. The UNRWA, which is a UN uh, uh, agency, operated schools and hospitals day and night. And they don't care. Number five, cutting off electricity, water, and fuel, and more atrocities at this moment. And all of them, they fall under crime against humanity according to the international law and they don't care. What's happening now locally here in San Diego County? Our community members need to be informed. You need to know what's going on. Because a lot of people ask me, what are we doing? Any action we are doing, here's what we are doing. Number one, biased media coverage based on what they receive from the Zionist sources. And we have all seen this. Number two, biased and one-sided statements by our elected officials all the way from the White House, shame on him, to our San Diego mayor, shame on him as well. Just repeating the lies published by the Zionist propaganda machine, which incited violence against American, Palestinians, Arab, and Muslims. What happened in Chicago, a six-year-old boy stabbed 26 times, this is not acceptable. Dehumanization through propaganda breeds hate crimes. This is what we have seen all the time. Number three, what's happening locally, biased one-sided statements by the heads of the educational institutions like UCSD, San Diego State, and USD. We have seen that, unfortunately putting their Palestinian, Arab, and Muslim students at risk, and encouraging hate incidents, harassment, and intimidation against our students, and creating a very uncomfortable and hostile climate on college campuses. We have seen that. I've seen that with my own eyes. I've been to these campuses. And we have received so many reports from our students from these three campuses. Number four, school districts amplifying the Zionist narrative 
and ignoring the existence of our Palestinian, Arab, and Muslim kids, not giving them the chance or the choice to voice their opinion and speak their, their minds. Number five, hate incident right here at ICSD. When last week we had two guys who came in the darkness of the night posting some hateful flyers right at the entrance of ICSD. Number six, a campaign of hate incidents and threats against Palestinian owned businesses. Like what's happening these days with Ala ad Din restaurant. In the last two days, they received more than 300 phone calls, text messages, and emails threatening them and accusing them to be terrorists. A Palestinian owned restaurant, and he is not the only one. Many others receive the same thing. So what are we doing now as a community? What we have done so far and what we are doing? And what you need to know so you can be part of this action taken by the community? The San Diego for Palestine Coalition initiated by ICSD right here in this building, alhamdulillah. We brought together a number of organizations, community organizations within the Arab and the Muslim community, and we started acting together, coordinating many actions and events. The town hall meeting at ICSD that took place last Friday night. The press conference last, last Thursday, covered by all the media here in San Diego. Delivering letters to elected officials, organizing rallies and protests, meeting with elected officials in person, and virtually. On Wednesday, we had a meeting right here with Attorney General Bonta. For his credit, he is the only, so far, elected official at the level of the state of California reaching out to the Arab and Muslim community. We had a virtual meeting with the um, City Council President, Sean Oliveira, and we were supposed to have a meeting with the mayor of San Diego. The meeting was set up until we went to the office and all of a sudden, the mayor is not available. Why? Oh, we don't know. Okay, you said that he was supposed to be here to meet with us face to face, right? In person. Yeah, but I mean, we are sorry, we apologize for that. This is not acceptable. This is a sign of disrespect to the entire community. So the mayor had the, had the time, enough time, to go and attend a rally, an event with the other side, taking pictures, holding the sign of San Diego stands with Israel and bragging about it, but he didn't have the time to meet with community members. Shame on him but we're not going to be silent. We want him to meet with us, whether he likes it or not. We are his constituents, his constituents, and we want him to meet with us. He needs to hear our version as he heard the other version, and this is our right. What we did also is countering a resolution by the San Diego Democratic Party, a horrible resolution, putting all the responsibility on the Palestinian resistance and Palestinian people without mentioning a word about the situation of the Palestinian Arab and Muslim community right here in San Diego. Collecting reports of hate incidents, speaking to school officials, the superintendent office of San Diego Unified School District. So these are the actions that we have done rallies and protests. And by the way, tomorrow there will be another protest, tomorrow Saturday at 2 p.m. in downtown in front of the federal building on Broadway. These are the actions that we have taken and more are coming inshallah. So we're not silent. Even though they wanted to silence us, we will never be silent because we are a big community. We are a smart community. We are a strong community and we have the right to speak up like everyone else. 
We are not a threat to anyone. We are a source of guidance and a source of peace right here in San Diego County. So now, my dear brothers and sisters, what's our duty as a community? This is what I want everyone to pay attention to. What's our duty? Number one, first and foremost, we should turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, repent to him from our sins and shortcomings, work on ourselves, uplift our, uplift our spirituality, strengthen our iman, improve our commitment to our creator and sustainer. We can't be strong externally unless we are strong internally. We, we will have no impact on the society unless and until we are true Muslims. If we leave our deen on the side and we try to tackle the issues as we are, wallahi, we will never be successful. We can never be strong externally until we are strong internally. Number two, this is the time when our community should be united. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminding us in Surah Ali Imran, and hold firmly together to the rope of Allah and do not be divided. Do not be divided. It's not the time to argue. It's not the time to raise our voices about anything else except how to empower our community, how to protect one another and how to be the voice of our brothers and sisters in Gaza and Palestine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in another verse, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوهُ تَكُمْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ كَبِيرٌ As for the disbelievers, they are guardians and supporters of one another. Unless you, you believers act likewise, there will be a great oppression and corruption in the land. If we are divided, we don't support one another, then oppression and corruption will spread on the land. Number three, be well informed, my dear brothers and sisters. Be well informed and educated about the reality. And this is the most important thing, the most important statement keep in mind whenever you talk to somebody about what's going on now. What we are witnessing now did not start last week or October the 7th. This is a result of a 75 plus years of brutal Zionist occupation of Palestine. And it is the result of the 16 plus years of the brutal barbaric blockade of Gaza. That's it, point. Nothing else to add. Because they are trying to tell us that what's going on now in Gaza is justified because of the attack, no. What's going on now is the result, the continuous brutal occupation of Palestine and Gaza. And when people are occupied, then the resistance is justified. Resistance when people are occupied becomes a human right. People have the right to resist. People have the right to defend their lives and the lives of their community members. People have the right to defend their land, their properties, their, their deen their dignity, their honor. We cannot accuse somebody who is fighting for his life to be a terrorist. The terrorist is the one, the terrorist is the one who started the occupation, not the one who is defending himself and his brothers and sisters around him. This should be very clear. Teach our kids about the history of Palestine, about the occupation, about the suffering. Don't tell me that, oh, it's too graphic for our kids to watch. If our kids are victims of Islamophobia, if they are victims of his, this hatred at school, then they are at the age to be taught what's going on in Palestine and what's going on in Gaza. Number four, be proactive. Be politically and actively engaged. Unfortunately, we are still debating whether voting is halal or haram. Be proactive, politically and civically engaged. We need to build political power in our community. This is the only way our voices will be heard. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminding us, subhanallah, in the story of Musa alayhi salam, Udkhulu alayhimu al-bab, fa'idha dakhaltumuhum fa'innakum ghalibun, wa'ala Allahi fatawakkalu in kuntum mu'mineen. Surprise them through the gate. If you do, you will certainly prevail. Put your trust in Allah, and if you are truly believers. Number four, number five, support each other. Comfort each other. Care for one another. Check on each other. Support Palestinian businesses who are receiving threats and so much hate. Show up to community protests and rallies. Support the billboard project sponsored by the MLC Muslim Leadership Council. Follow the AMP American Muslim for Palestine and the PYM actions. PYM Palestinian Youth Movement. These are the people and many more that we are working with at the San Diego for Palestine Coalition. Number six, contact your elected officials, phone calls, emails. We have a list in the office and we have flyers posted. You can just scan the QR and take action. It's very important. Spend, let's spend some, some of our time. I mean, our brothers and sisters are putting their lives on the line and we don't have time to make a call. We don't have time to sign a petition. Number six, I've said this, contact your elected officials and please get the, the, the contact information of our elected officials uh, with their contact information and do your best. Do your duty and call them. Number seven, support our kids at school. Whenever there is something biased, don't leave your, our kids alone, feeling helpless. Go and talk with the school admins, with teachers, and please, brothers and sisters, report every single hate incident. Two of our girls been harassed at one of the universities right here. We asked them to come forward and report it. We need to report everything. Their parents didn't allow them to do this because they are afraid about their safety. I'm sorry. Wallahi, if this is the mentality, this is, this is who we are, we will never advance our cause. We will never move forward. Number eight, connect with your neighbors, coworkers, classmates, and be the voice of truth. Educate them about the history of Palestine. It's not a war. It's not a conflict. It is a genocide paid by our tax dollars. Let's set our, our talk straight. It's not a war, it's not a conflict. It's a genocide paid by our tax dollars. They have no other sources. Our neighbors, our classmates, our fellow Americans, they have no other sources except the US biased media outlets. We need to change the American public opinion. And we can do that by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then our heart and sincere work. Number nine, make a lot of dua. Make a lot of dua. We believe in the power of dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised us. Ud'uni astajib lakum. Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for us and the best of protectors. Pray at night. Pray at night at home and make dua. Help by sending donations. Whenever you hear about any action to benefit our brothers and sisters in Palestine, in Gaza, just do whatever you can. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our ability. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وصل اللهم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters there are a few announcements that I would like to share with you. So tonight's lecture will be after Isha, inshallah, please join us. The youth program tonight at the new expansion for middle and high school. 
For the elementary school age, there will be a parents' orientation uh, session in the multipurpose room after Salat al-Isha. ICSD will have an open mosque day on Sunday, October 22nd, which is after tomorrow, starting from 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. So please invite your non-Muslim neighbors and friends to come and attend, inshallah. A protest demanding an immediate ceasefire and stop the genocide in Gaza, provide urgent humanitarian aid, and end the siege on Gaza tomorrow, Saturday, starting at 2 p.m. on Broadway in downtown in front of the federal building. Please be mindful, brothers and sisters, when you park on the street, please do not do anything that might harm, that might give the wrong picture of who we are and our faith to our neighbors. Please be mindful and be respectful to our neighbors. For more information, you can uh, log on our website, icsd.org. Uh, and please make dua for our brothers and sisters in Gaza, of course. They have the priority at this time. And also, Brother Ghani's wife is having a surgery today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant her a speedy recovery and bring her back safe to her husband and her kids. And also, Brother Bashir is sick. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him a speedy recovery, as shifa al ajil. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us all, to forgive our shortcomings, to forgive our mistakes, to forgive our shortcomings towards our brothers and sisters in Gaza and Palestine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us, strengthen our iman, strengthen our community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be the best ambassadors of the Palestinian issue in this land. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to educate ourselves and educate others. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our brothers in Gaza and Palestine and in Jerusalem and everywhere, wherever people are oppressed, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease their situation. Nas'aluka Rabbi an taghfir dhunubana wa an tukaffir anna sayyatina wa an tatawaffana ma'al abrar fi jannat al-na'im. اللهم انصر إخواننا في غزة وفلسطين اللهم انصر إخواننا في غزة وفلسطين اللهم كن معهم ولا تكن عليهم اللهم أمددهم بمدد من عندك يا رب العالمين اللهم وارحم شهداءهم يا رب العالمين واشف مرضاهم وجرحاهم يا رب العالمين اللهم عليك بمن قتلهم يا رب العالمين اللهم عليك بمن خانهم يا رب العالمين اللهم أرنا فيهم عجائب قدرتك اللهم خذهم أخذ عزيز مقتدر اللهم عافنا واعف عنا اللهم واحفظنا بما تحفظ به عبادك الصالحين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي وقوموا إلى صلاتكم وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استو استقيم واعتدل يرحمكم الله straighten the rows and fill the gaps بارك الله فيكم أتم الصفوف الأول فالأول complete the first rows before starting a new one بارك الله فيكم Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'budu Wa Iyaka Nasta'een Ihdina Al-Sirat Al-Mustaqeem Sirat Al-Yadheen An'amta Alayhim غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إن الذين فتنوا المؤمنين والمؤمنات ثم لم يتوبوا 
ثم لم يتوبوا فلهم عذاب جهنم ولهم عذاب الحريق الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم ملك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لهم جنات لهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار ذلك الفوز الكبير الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله